Rope as a contender for the Alameda uh, arrived through the director, Roger Michel, um, who is, I think, probably one of the top four or five directors in this country. Uh, almost unique in that he spends an equal amount of time working on film uh, and theatre. Uh, he's a quite remarkable director. So uh, when he rang me up and said he wanted to do this play, I was immediately intrigued. I read Rope years ago, probably 20 or 30 years ago, and liked it enormously and in fact touted it over the years to a couple of theatres. In the same way that Patrick Hamilton has been kind of exhumed over the last um, decade or so, um, I think people are now prepared to re-examine his work and to see it for what it is, which is a sort of very brilliantly stage-managed and crafted piece of drama, which is also um, a piece of anthropology. What was so striking was the incredible quality of the writing. And with great respect to other thriller writers, most stage thrillers are appallingly written. We should never say never here. I mean, the great joy of running the Almeida is that you can kind of tackle any genre that you want. So why shouldn't we do a thriller? It's not what you'd expect a, a cutting edge theater like ours to do, but to take the very finest example of that genre and give it one of the finest directors around the chance to direct it seemed to me to be perfect for us. The moment you use the word thriller, uh, people ha automatically have a kind of expectation of the kind of evening it's going to be. One of the immediate ways that Roger Michel has challenged this notion is that he's completely transforming our theatre. We had this notion of um, rain and fog and smog and uh, maybe all of London surrounding the acting area in miniature form. And because of the notion of it being in real time, the action of a play, that, that it would, that actually the, one idea was that it would be on a clock face around the carpet and that the carpet would very, very infinitesimally move clockwise and rotate. We honed down to a polygon shape, which blended in with the, the notion of how the Almeida is formed, the shape of the seating as it stands now. A simple floor with a carpet, chairs, a door, a fireplace, the necessary things. The only sort of extraneous thing I suspect is, is this glass coupler over the action. That's there in a, to harness the world, to provide some sort of rooftop. I think you want to feel that you are in the room with these people and this corpse in this box. And the Almeida's you know, kind of the right size for it, but also because of the way it's um, laid out, it's been possible for us to make this play in the round for the first time at the Almeida, properly in the round. And that, I think, will exacerbate this idea that you're, you're sitting in this room full of the, the kind of putrefaction of a human being, and that you are, you are not only privy, but in a way you're complicit. It challenges the audience to quite literally see the characters in three dimensions, so that the, any sense of these are the goodies, these are the baddies, um, is challenged because you, you see them as three-dimensional people. This is a horrible corner of of humanity to look into, but they're just people. I love the audiences being privy to each to each other's moves, so that the audiences are, are staring through the action to another bank of audience, and you can see each other's faces falling slowly as the as the evening gets kind of darker and darker. Quite often when people say to me, "What are you doing at the moment?" I say, "Rope." They say, "Ah, oh, Hitchcock." And people automatically assume that Hitchcock originated this, this material or wrote it or, you know, that it was a, this is a play based on the film, etc. It's historic because it's one of Hitch's first uh, movies in colour. And he shot it multi-camera, which is how television first started, where you'd have live broadcast and it, four or five cameras and you'd be switching from camera to camera, which of course allowed you hugely long takes. It takes certain liabilities, put it that way. It updates it and changes the balance of 
the players within it because the age is all mixed up. So I don't think it's a great movie. A lot of its darker elements and a lot of its uh, philosophical elements have been removed. Hitch himself didn't like it in his later years and quite critical of it, but it give, it's, it's helped to establish that title. It's, I think it's very much what I would call a, a, a winter play. It's, it's the sort of um, mysterious, dark, um, almost like a ghost story that, 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 that you would sit round the fireside and have somebody read. It's got a kind of gorgeous, spooky, scary element to it. I mean, I think the play has something to offer everyone. You know, my, my kids, my teenage children will love it, I know. Um, but I think... Um, People who were alive in 1928 when the play was written would also love it. I mean, it's funny, it's, it's, it's chilling, it's uh, incredibly well characterised, uh, it's detailed um, and it's short. I mean, what more can you ask? Perfect Christmas show.